Hello everyone, my name's Ed O'Mara, and before we start today's video, I wanted to remind all of you that my opinions are my own, and they don't necessarily reflect the feelings of other people associated with this channel, past or present. If you're sensitive to strong language or discussions of sexual harassment, you might want to click away from the video right now. That's totally fine. But otherwise, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Jim Murray is a creepy ass old rat fucker. Assuming that I got the thumbnail I wanted to be on this video and Erica didn't talk me out of it, I'm sure there are people who clicked on this video instantly enraged and ready to fight me in the comments. Totally fine. I'm sure that some people already agree with me. Uh, maybe not for the reasons I'm going to list in a second, but some agree with me already. That's fine. And I don't really care if you rip me apart in the comments. I'm gonna say my piece. And of course, we are addressing the Jim Murray elephant because he named Alberta Cast Strength Premium as his top whiskey in the world this past year. Now, I didn't feel comfortable discussing this whiskey without discussing that and by extension discussing Jim Murray. However, that discussion should not be taken as any indication of my feelings about this product or the company that makes it. The review is entirely separate from my opinions about Jim Murray. For those of you who don't know Jim Murray, every year he releases the self-published Whiskey Bible. He tastes thousands and thousands of whiskeys over the course of the year and gives his personal opinions on them and says, this is the best one from Asia, this is the best one from Scotland, this is the best X, Y, Z in each category. And of course, he names his best world whiskey of the year. This past year was the Alberta Premium Cast Strength Rye. Now, I've been wanting to try this for a minute. A lot of people up in Canada, who we make fun of constantly, but we actually love, have been telling me, this stuff's great. This stuff's great. I mean, relatively recently released, it hadn't made its way down to the US until just a little while ago. So I was excited to get some even before Jim Murray started talking it up. However, I should point out that this bottle is not the same exact batch as Jim Murray drank. That's immaterial. We're going to judge this on its merits. We're going to talk about Jim Murray right now. Some people don't like Jim Murray. Some people find Jim Murray to be pretentious. They find him to be excessively obsessed with his process for tasting whiskey. He doesn't eat cooked meals when he's doing it. He only eats bland foods. Uh, he, he has a whole ritual surrounding whiskey. That seems a little bit over the top to some. Uh, that's fine. I don't really care about that. That's not why I don't like him. Some people don't like Jim Murray because once he brings a whiskey to everyone's radar, suddenly dozens and thousands and millions of people are all trying to get the whiskey and suddenly the fans of that whiskey can't find it anymore. Which is an understandable frustration. However, you can't fault a man for bringing attention to a certain underappreciated brand that he likes and then people moving on that recommendation. That's, that's totally fair, that's fair game. Frustrating as it may be, that's not why I don't like him. And some people think that Mr. Murray may be unduly influenced by certain distilleries or producers, that there may be some sort of quid pro quo bribery going on that leads certain whiskeys to get better scores in his Bible. As far as I know, those are just rumors and are unsubstantiated. Um, so, not a problem here. The problem I have with Jim Murray is just his creepy, weird, objectifying behavior. There's been some behavior that Jim Murray has displayed in the past, and some of his writing that showed up in the recent Whiskey Bible that has made people question if he's really a very good spokesman for the whiskey community. This has included comparing tasting certain whiskeys to having sexual relations with a woman, and in at least one case at a live tasting, asking everyone in the room to picture one female guest 
nude. I want to make it clear that I consider myself very sex positive. And if you've watched this channel, I think that's true of the channel as well. We like some body humor. We're not afraid to discuss sex. Sex is wonderful. Sex is natural. Sex is amazing. However, I don't care for creepy ass old men making things uncomfortable for everybody else. And I know this is going to get some people riled up. They're going to say, you're being too sensitive. You know, why? we should be able to talk about sex. We should be able to do this. You know, people can't take a joke anymore. Fuck off, all right? There's a difference between being body and having sexual humor and talking about sex and just being creepy as fuck. And if you can't tell the difference, if you can't tell the difference between flirtation and sexual humor and sexual harassment, then guess what? You're probably a creepy ass motherfucker too. I'm not trying to king shame or be negative about sex. If this was just about Jim Murray being sexually attracted to his whiskey, that would be fine. You know, whatever you want to do. You want to fuck your whiskey bottles? You want to stick your dick in your whiskey glass? Okay, whatever. Do your, do your thing, man. But when you start comparing whiskey to women, when you start comparing women to an object, and that's your main way of talking about whiskey, that's weird. And that makes things uncomfortable for women who are trying to get into whiskey. It's reducing women, again, to this role they had in the past as related to whiskey, which was a man drinks whiskey and appreciates it the way he appreciates a fine woman. And the woman is an object for him to appreciate, just like his whiskey. It's like an old whiskey commercial where the woman is an object. She's just the model there to sell the booze to a man. She's not there to enjoy it. You know, she's not there to take part in the culture. She's just there for the man to appreciate just the way he does appreciate this fine whiskey. Not to mention the whole bit where he's apparently sexually harassed people at live tastings. That's just beyond the pale. If you, if you thought, oh, well, this turns a phrase in his books or whatever, people need, to, people need to calm down. Okay, all right. I don't agree. I don't agree. But let's say I grant you that. What the fuck is with this shit at the live tastings? And, he, and he, apparently, he claims, oh, she was a plant. She was someone I knew was going to be there, and I knew she was okay with saying that. Okay. One, I don't believe you. And two... No one else in the room fucking knew that. So you just, what? You set up a sexual harassment role play without anyone else in the room knowing? So all these other people in the room just thought you were sexual, sexually harassing this poor woman. Yeah, that's cool. And the backdrop to this, of course, is that there are so many more women interested in whiskey, drinking whiskey, taking part and working in the whiskey industry, and they keep coming up against shit like this. There's a lot of stories out there of very knowledgeable women who know their whiskey inside and out, having their opinions devalued compared to their male counterparts. Again, just being treated like they're the eye candy, just, just to sell the whiskey. They don't actually know whiskey. They don't actually drink whiskey. They're just, they're just there to be pretty. It's this old school sexism that we really need to root out of the whiskey community. We need to be making the whiskey community as broadly accessible as possible possible. And comparing women and their bodies and their sexuality to a consumable inanimate object, that's not going to help. And of course, there are a bunch of really amazing women who are currently working at very, very high levels of the whiskey industry. And I'd like to believe that a lot of people in the whiskey industry at this point believe they should be there and are totally supportive of them. However, there's also a lot of the hoi polloi who go to whiskey shows and, you know, engage in whiskey, who still believe in this old boys club bullshit. And that's fucked up. And Jim Murray, with this weird, creepy old man bullshit, he's contributing to that. And I don't appreciate it. Part of the reason I'm sensitive about this sort of topic is that I come from a family where multiple members suffered incestual sexual abuse. So, when it comes to this sort of thing, when it comes to sexual harassment or sexual assault, I don't give a fuck if you meant it as a joke. I don't give a fuck if you thought you were just being cute or funny or just having a little bit of a laugh. I don't give a fuck, all right? It's not about how you meant it. It's about how it was received. What it comes down to is are we trying to make this community as open as possible 
where everyone can enjoy whiskey and take part, or are some entitled members of our community so afraid of change that they need to keep it an old boys club? And that's why I say fuck Jim Murray and anyone like him. All right, we need to jettison these fuckers out of the community. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. Now let's talk about this fucking whiskey. So yeah, I've been excited for this guy. It's 100% rye grain, 66% alcohol. Goddamn, that's exciting. And aged in charred oak. I assume almost all new charred oak. They don't have to do new charred oak in Canada. However, for the more flavorful whiskeys, they generally do. And Alberta obviously uses a lot of new charred oak for the stuff they sell to Whistle Pig, so it would make sense. Some of it may not be new, but I would imagine most, if not all of it is. I did already take the neck pour off of this, as we do for pretty much every review we do. I was really pleasantly surprised with the nose on this because I got a lot of mint on this, and that's not something I usually get with rye. I know it's a common note that other people get with rye, but I just don't think I'm that sensitive to it. But this one, I did, and I was excited to find that. That, a little bit of black tea, a little bit of eucalyptus, this is going in a good direction right here. There is some carameliness too. There is kind of a caramely wood sugar thing going on there, so it's not all just dry and spicy and herbaceous. It's, uh, there's a little bit of sweetness there, which I hope doesn't overwhelm those spicier notes. You know me, I like them dry. Oh, that makes me happy. It's got apple. It's got a little bit of toffee. It's got that uh, eucalyptus -y black tea thing going on. I like that. It's got some pepper. It's got some peachio kind of thing. Now, the official tasting notes do say chocolate and black currant. And I love black currant. I'm really trying to find that black currant in there. Because I love black currant. There is a berry like flavor. I don't know if it's quite black currant. I was going to say more like blackberry, which I guess they're related, right? I'm not actually sure if they're related or not, but they're kind of a similar flavor, I guess. There's a nice allspice thing going on. It's caramely, but it's kind of like a spicy, all spicy caramel. And I dig that. If you're going to make something a little bit sweet, it's got to be spicy. That's how I feel anyway. Why don't we add a drop of water real quick? I'll be back in a second. While we're waiting for that water to sit, can I just say, I do appreciate the screw top. Like, I, I like synthetic corks more, maybe, but uh, screw tops generally better than natural cork, in my opinion. So, yeah, I got no problem with the screw top. Unpretentious, utilitarian, I'm good with it. Interestingly, this got more tannic. More cinnamony. Yeah, there's more cinnamon here now. Maybe a little bit more like of a black pepper thing, too. Maybe it's just like a cinnamon and apple thing that's making me think of apple pie a little bit. This is a very fall kind of whiskey. See, that's interesting. I feel like on the nose, it upped to that tannic oakiness. There was more of a sawdusty thing. Maybe a little bit less so on the taste. The taste runs just more pepper. More pepper, a little less of that oaky backbone. A little, maybe a little bit less of the vanilla, the caramel. Kind of less allspice, too. It just comes off kind of like that heavier spice. I don't necessarily mind that, but it does feel a little less well-rounded. I like them spicy, but I also like them complex. So, you know, if you can balance that, that's good. Although the nose, I really like the nose with a drop of water. More greenery. More of like a thymey kind of thing, or that herbaceous garden spice, you know, kind of thing. Like a rosemary, maybe. It, it actually is edging beyond herbaceous and into floral a little bit. I dig it. I dig that nose. The taste, maybe not quite as well-rounded with water in it, but that nose, that nose kind of makes up for it, actually. The only thing I will say is this is a little bit of a sweeter ride. There obviously is some barrel influence here. There's obviously some caramel, some vanilla. So that brought up the sweetness a little bit. I like them bone frickin' dry. So 
yeah, I, I could have gone for maybe a little bit more dry, but at the same time, that oakiness does provide some welcome complexity, a little bit of that black tea with honey kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, could it be more spicy? Sure. But that's basically what I say about every rye. I'm always like, yeah, keep it the same, except add more spice. <laughs> so yes, this has been a review of Alberta Premium Cast Strength. Although quite a bit of it was just me talking about the politics of the whiskey community. But hopefully you gained something from this. I'm sure a lot of you didn't even watch this point and are already ripping me apart in the comments. I'll be happy to see you down there. Until next time, this has been the Rock Cut Review. My name is Ed O'Mara. You guys, stay safe, stay healthy, don't forget to subscribe and like. We got a patron if you want to support the channel. And stay rotten.